So today we're going to take a look at angles around a point. So since there are 360 degrees in a circle, the sum of the measures of the angles about a fixed point is 360 degrees. So about fixed point O, we have angle X, angle Y, angle Z, angle P, and angle Q. So the sum of those angle measures is 360 degrees. So in example one, if I'm trying to find the measure of Z, so this angle here about this fixed point, I know that all three angles, Z plus 82 plus 172 degrees is equal to 360 degrees. So finding the sum of 82 and 172, we get Z plus 254 equals 360. Subtracting 254 from 360, we get Z is equal to 106 degrees. And then in part B, about this fixed point here, to find the value of Z, again, the sum of all three angles, Z, this 133 degree angle and that 147 degree angle is equal to 360. So I'm going to write it different. I'm going to say 360 minus the sum of 133 and 147 is equal to the measure of angle Z. So 360 minus the sum of 133 and 147 is 280. And I get Z equivalent to 80 degrees. Okay, so before we start uh, our first construction, our segment constructions, um, and then our angle constructions, I'd like you to utilize the space to get out your compass and just practice drawing circles. So I'm gonna make this board compass a little bit smaller. I'm not quite sure why this one is staying on the screen. So I'm gonna get rid of that. So just take a minute, practice drawing circles on your paper uh, you're going to want to put a point at the center of your circle first and then take your compass and I just want you to get the feel of the tool. So take some time, draw some circles, um, so pause the video now and then when you're ready to do the first construction uh, you can unpause the video. Alright, example two. Using a compass and straight edge, constru or construct segment CD, a line segment congruent to the line segment below AB, and leave all marks. So the first thing you want to take out is your straight edge. We start every construction with a ray. So a ray has one end point, so take your pencil. Um, you don't have to necessarily make the point first. I'm going to because I'm not going to use a ruler because the tool is a pain in the butt uh, up here on the Active Inspire, the Promethean board. So I want you to take and draw a segment with your straight edge, so your ruler. And then I want you to add the point and the arrow. Okay? You're going to take the compass and you're going to measure the given segment with the tool by putting the compass point on one end point in the segment and then the pencil on the other. To show that you actually measured with the tool, you need to make an arc up here. Okay, it doesn't matter the length, so I'm going to move that aside. So you just make an arc. You could have made it on B, so you can have the compass on reverse direction or have it as I have it. And so you just need an arc on one end. It doesn't matter the, matter the length. So there's the width of it. Then you bring it over, bring your compass point to the end point of this segment. Line it up, and you're going to make an arc, okay, with your compass width the same of the above, as above. And that compass width is actually a radius. It's the radius of the circle you would draw with the center at that blue dot, okay? So now, for segment AB, the only thing we have left to do is to put an end point here at this arc and label the segment AB. Okay, it doesn't matter where A goes, or I'm sorry, not AB, but we're constructing line segment CD congruent to AB. 
So they have to have the same length. Down to number three. So I'm going to slide the compass down. Actually, it's showing another one there. I'm not quite sure what's going on with the software. And in this example, it says using a compass in a straight edge, construct segment PQ, a line segment whose length is twice the length of the given segment AB. So the first thing you're going to do is start with your ray again. So line up your compass, or your ruler rather, and draw a straight line. So you're going to start, OK, with your straight line, and then add to that your endpoint and arrow for the ray. And you want to make sure when you draw it that your line is twice as long as AB. Okay? So now to measure AB, and I did not change the setting, so you should be able to leave your compass setting the same, but I opened up another compass, so I'm going to line it up so that the compass point is on A and the pencil on B. So there's the correct width for a segment congruent. So I'm going to make the arc to show that I measured. And then I'm going to bring it down and put my compass point on the end point and draw an arc. So now this segment, again, is the same length, so therefore congruent. To make it twice the length, you're then going to move your compass point to the arc that you made to make it double the size or double the length. So I'm going to actually I'll close that. And then now to finish up, I just need to add my endpoint and, of course, label. So here's the endpoint for twice as long. And then I need to label it said construct segment PQ. So here's P and here's Q. All right, our next construction. Using a compass and a straight edge, construct line JK. So you see the arrows are above the letters and it's very small. But this time I'm going to need arrows on my constructed line, which is the perpendicular bisector of the given segment AB. So let's think about first what a perpendicular bisector is. So bisector in this case with a segment is going to be anything that divides the segment into two congruous segments. And it also has to be perpendicular. So my bisector, again, is the line. So I need a line. So if I just sketch it real quick, this would be a line that looks like it bisects it. So this segment congruent to that. But it's not perpendicular to AB. OK, so what that would look like is not a line. So there's the middle. It's going to have to be something like this. Okay, so to construct that, we get our compass and we need to put the compass point on one of the endpoints. Now, we're going to draw an arc, okay, but I don't, I want the radius of the compass so that the pencil extends beyond where the middle is. So and why that is is because you're going to take, so I'm going to bring it back and you're going to draw an arc. I'll maybe open a little bit more. And whatever's comfortable for you. If it's too small of a radius and it's too awkward, then just open it up. And you're going to draw an arc from this endpoint. Okay. Then you're going to slide it over to the other endpoint, and you're going to draw the same size arc, so you're not changing the compass setting. And if your pencil goes past the midpoint of that segment, your arcs will overlap. Okay. So my arcs intersect here and here. Okay, if, they, if your pencil didn't go past the midpoint, your arcs were not overlapping, you'd have to make it wider and do it again. So now I'd like you to use your straight edge. Once again, I'm not going to use it because the tool is a pain in the butt to use using the Promethean board. And you're going to line up that straight edge so you can draw a straight line all the way through. Now because it has the arrows here, you must also have the arrows on your constructed line. Okay, so that is the perpendicular bisector of AB. We do need to do one more thing because it's said to name it JK. So I'm going to name this point J and this point K. Again, it doesn't matter. I could have had J below and K up top. In example number five, it says using a compass and a straight edge, locate the midpoint. Well, if I go back up to the construction I just did, 
This point right here, where the perpendicular bisector intersects segment AB, this is the midpoint. Okay, so to construct that point, we need to do the same exact construction. So, I'm going to open up another compass. The segment's uh, vertical this time, so I'm going to line it up here. And my pencil, again, it needs to go past, right there, it's not past the middle, so the two arcs wouldn't overlap. We need to open it up. So I draw an arc from this side, move it over to the other end point, and I'm going to draw another arc from this side. All I really need to see, if you didn't want to draw, or anyone grading the regions, if you didn't want to draw the full arcs, all we need to see are these overlapping X's. So now through those two points, you line up your ruler and draw a line connecting the two. So I'm going to sketch it by hand. And this time, because I'm constructing the midpoint, I don't need the arrows at the end of that line I just drew. But I do need to put a dot here because the midpoint is a point. And I like to just draw an arrow and reinforce that that indeed is the midpoint. To finish up this page in the box below, it says that each point on the perpendicular bisector of a line segment is blank from the endpoints. So I'm going to grab, uh, actually I grab with the color orange. So let's take a look at this point way out here. Okay, how does that relate? to the end point of the line segment. It says both. So I'm just going to connect that with a straight line. I want you to think about that for a moment. And I'll actually prove it to you using the compass. All right, so this point right here is equidistant from the end points of a line segment. So equi, E-Q-U-I, D-I-S-T-A-N-T. So if I call this point P, okay, what that really is saying is that the length P-A is equal to the length P-B, or if I was talking about the segments, segment P-A is congruent to segment P-Q. So if we take our compass and open it up and actually use this as our measuring tool, not a ruler, uh, we can see that the distance right there from the compass point to um, the pencil, so from P to B, that's the same distance, if I rotate my compass around, is here. Okay? They are equidistant. And that's going to work for any point on the perpendicular bisector. So if I use this point here that's really close, I wanted to change that to pink, the distance will say Q, the distance from Q to A is the same as the distance from Q to B. So I'm going to mark that. So let's check it. Q to A. Let's bring it in. Q to A. Now let's look at Q to B. It is the same. Okay? So any point, once again, on that perpendicular bisector is going to be equidistant from the endpoints of that segment. All right, now on to some angle constructions. So using a compass and straight edge, construct angle P, an angle congruent to the given angle A. Now we have a whole space for this. So I'm actually going to move it down, and we're going to start the construction down here. Okay. To do the construction, you start with a ray, just like you would a segment. So line up your ruler, draw your segment, and then add on to that your arrow and endpoint. Now that ray, okay, coincides or matches up with this ray. Okay, they're both going horizontally. And then these two points in reference to the construction are the same. So up top, when I copy, we're going to put your compass point on the vertex of the ray and using the vocab. And you're gonna draw any size arc you want. Now, I wouldn't draw an arc this size because it's just too awkward. So open it up and you wanna draw an arc that intersects both rays of the angle. 
and then you're going to slide it down to the ray that you drew so that you can copy it and you're going to move your compass point down here to the end point of the ray and draw the same size arc. Okay, It's a little bit longer, but that's okay. Now the two points that I have that correspond is this point here and this point here. So I need to be able to draw this ray. In order to do so, I need that point. So what we're going to do is I'm going to rotate and reflect my compass. And now I'm going to put the compass point on this point to measure the distance from here to here. And to show that I measured that distance, I'm going to draw an arc. Now that intersection just gave me this point that I needed. So now down here, we're going to slide the compass to that point right there, and we're going to draw the arc. Okay. Now that you have that arc, again, we're going to move that away and draw the point. So now that I know, line up your ruler, everything you're doing is with a straight edge. And I'm going to draw the ray through here. Okay, and that ray that you drew right here matches up with that one in copying it. Okay, so there's the congruent angle. And then lastly, oh, no, sorry, we have two more examples. But number seven is going to be twice the size. So we're going to use, oh, one last thing here. It did say to construct angle P, so I do need to go back and label this vertex P. Now to do double, and then we need to label at the end angle Q. So down here, okay, I will draw this ray. So here's the vertex of that angle. I'll do the vertex of my new angle right here, and I'm going to draw the starting ray like this. It's just like copying an angle, okay? So we're going to put the compass point here. I'm going to move this in a little bit for this one. And I'm going to draw an arc that intersects both rays of the angle. We're still going to slide it down to our vertex of our new angle. And we're going to draw an arc. So if I was copying it, I'd draw the same length, which maybe is about there. But since I want to do double, I'm going to go maybe twice as long. To measure the width, Okay, to talk about what corresponds at this point or what matches up in copying it. So here's the vertex. There's the vertex there. I now have this point, which matches up with that point. And what I need, again, is this one. So we're going to line up the compass. So now the compass points here. And to measure the width of this angle, we're going to, again, measure it using the point in the pencil. I'm going to grab the green. And to show that I measured it, we make the arc. Okay. So now I'm going to take and slide my uh, compass point again. Right now it's on the pink dot. Slide it down to the pink dot here, and you're going to make an arc. Now that angle there, if I were to draw a ray through that intersection right here, I've got that point and that point, that would be congruent with the same size. We want it to be double. So we're going to line up our compass point on this point now and make two arcs. So the width is twice as big, which is double. Now through that point right here, we're going to draw, line up your ruler or your straight edge, and you're going to draw the ray. Okay, so that's twice the size. And once again, it's said to label the angle Q. And then to finish, number eight, it says using a compass and a straight edge, construct the angle bisector. So in thinking about what a bisector does, it divides an angle into two congruent angles. Okay, and the bisector that we're going to construct is a ray. So the first thing that we want to do is put the compass point on the vertex of the angle. I'm going to open this up, and you're going to draw an arc, just as you would if you were copying the angle, that intersects the rays of the angle. 
this time, and if you made the radius large enough so this radius might not work, um, but if it is large enough, you shouldn't have to use or change your compass setting. So the next part of the construction is putting your compass point there, and then we're going to put it there. And let's see if I can keep my compass setting the same. You put your compass point, so let me rotate it a little bit, put your compass point on that intersection of the ray and the arc, and you're going to draw an arc. Okay? I'm going to put it on, I'm going to rotate this back. And then you're going to put your compass point on the other intersection of the ray and the arc, and you're going to draw another arc that intersects it. Okay, so it's the arc in the X. And as I said, if your compass setting, if the radius is large enough, you won't have to change it. If those two arcs that we did here didn't intersect, then you'd have to do it again. Open up your compass, make a bigger radius. So now through that point of intersection, you're going to take your straight edge and draw a ray from the vertex of the angle through that point, and I'm just going to sketch it. Okay, and that is the angle bisector of angle A. It did not say to label it, but say we had to construct ray AP, the angle bisector, then we just put a P there. Okay, and lastly in the box, it says the angle bisector is the blank of angle A. So take a minute to think about that. It's the blank of angle A. Each point on one ray of the angle is blank over the angle bisector to its respective image. Image, and think of in middle school your transformations, which was your dilation, rotation, reflection, and translation, the slide. So which transformation is it? So let's go back up and take a look. This angle bisector. That angle bisector is the line of reflection. For angle A. So that means that each point on one ray, and I'll demonstrate that in a minute, uh, of the angle is reflected over the angle bisector to its respective image. So let's look up here. So let's take this point right here. So if I were to fold along that line, it would land right here. Okay? Um, the next part of the bottom, the next sentence, says a point and its image are equidistant from the angle bisector, that ray. When you connect a point to its image with a line segment, the point of intersection of the line segment and the angle bisector, so again, this distance we just said from the angle bisector to the point is equidistant from the angle bisector to the other point. So if we call this um, RS and call this M, because that's the midpoint of that segment, we know that RM is congruent to um, SM. So as I just said, it is the midpoint, that intersection of the line segment in the angle bisector is the midpoint. Additionally, the line segment is blank to the angle bisector. Therefore, the line of reflection is the blank of the segment connecting a point to its image. So let's go back up to our picture. It says, additionally, the line segment is blank to the angle bisector. So this is a line segment. What's the relationship between that and the angle bisector? It's that they're perpendicular. And because this is a midpoint of the segment, it is the, the segment is the perpendicular, or uh, I'm sorry, the 
uh, ray is the perpendicular bisector of this segment, which is your line of reflection. So additionally, the line segment is perpendicular to the ray or the angle bisector. And the line of reflection, the ray, is the perpendicular bisector, using the symbol for perpendicular, of the segment connecting a point to its image.